they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord. Verse 8, he says, to seek his face. Hallelujah. And praise God. That is the confident cry of every believer. I pray that's your cry today. Amen. The Lord is your light. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, he'll make ways for you. He'll sustain you. He'll keep you. Just wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he will strengthen thy heart. Hallelujah. Y'all missed that. Hallelujah. He will strengthen thine heart. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He'll bless you. He'll keep you. Hallelujah. And praise God. We're standing to our feet for the reading of the word. Amen. When you get a chance, I want you to peruse over your bulletin. There's some good information in there, uh, particularly some things that we're doing to reach the community. You'll see uh, three major activities in there that are to reach the community. So if you know a young person, there's something on the back of your bulletin to reach them. Amen. If you know a couple, there's something in there to reach them. If you know a future college student, there's something in there to reach them. And it's creative. It's going out of the church. Amen. Amen. It's, it, it's not something uh, that, that's normal. It's out of the pot. It's out of the box. Amen. So I want to encourage you to pray about it, look on, and see how you can bless it. Amen. Y'all look good today. Amen. I don't know if it's the weather or what, but you just look extra wonderful today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm serious. Amen. Uh, we're coming from Second Chronicles. We're coming from Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter 20. Uh, you may know much of the verse. Amen. Second Chronicles, chapter 20. And I'll begin reading at verse 2. I will be reading along with your bulletin. Amen. And praise God. Second Chronicles. Chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, beginning at verse 2 with the siege clause. Amen. You ready? It reads like this. Some man came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom, Edomites, from beyond the sea. And behold, they are in Hazazon Tamar, that is, in Gedi. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid and set his face to seek the Lord, and set his face to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Meanwhile, all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gehazel. He said, Listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Tomorrow we will go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the ascent of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the valley, east of the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. Stand still. Stand still. Stand firm. Hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord. On your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go against them, and the Lord will be with you. Then Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell down before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah, and praise God. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Do me a favor and find a few people and just say these words. Seek his face. Come on, you got to say it like you mean it. Seek his face. Hallelujah, and praise God. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, and praise God. 
seek his face. Deacon Banks, seek his face. Amen. Amen. Deacon, seek his face. Amen. Uh, I'm going to call the Marshall Smith. Marshall? Marshall. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I saved one of the uh, Smith face in my phone because I get them mixed up so much. Amen. Pray for him. And God, we thank you now for your word, for it speaking to our heart, for it moving our disposition for it lifting us when we are low, when we are high and arrogant, it brings us down. We thank you for your word because when we read your word, your word reads us. So we are grateful now, God, to be in your presence. God, we bind the enemy. We rebuke the spirit, the spirit of distraction. We're focused totally on you, God. We thank you for the victory that you've given us, the reminder of victory in your word. We thank you for the testimony of Jehoshaphat. Bless us now, solo dio gloria. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Minister Wood, I, I want to share very briefly uh, from the reality that when life offers a blitz, the appropriate response is to seek the Lord's face. You're familiar with the term blitz. If you are a fan of football, then you understand that in football, there is always opposition. When you have the ball, they are, you're facing the defense and you are the offense. And so they have what they call a defensive line. And their job is to break through your offensive line. Did I say that right? Defensive line. Thank you very much. Praise God. I work on Sundays. Amen. Defensive line. Uh, and, and get to the football. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. And so this is the common practice on every play, on every down. Move after move, they're always trying to attack the position and the possession of the football. However, there are, uh, there is an exceptional time. And this is when they make no effort to defend the back of the field, the greater part of the field. And all they do is send every enemy, every player to attack you at once. So while there is a normal level of pressure in the time of blitz, the pressure is double down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the pressure is greater. The pressure is its greatest. Well, that, that term is also used in battle warfare, but especially, especially spiritual warfare. Because every now and then, you will discover in your life that although the enemy is always trying to steal, kill, and destroy, although the enemy is always trying to discourage you and cause doubt and distract you and make you fall asleep in church, amen, although the enemy is always up to something, there comes an exceptional time. And in this time, Hodari, the enemy wants to do more than ever before. The enemy seems to attack you on every side. When you go to work, your boss is tripping and, and is trying to cause you to be upset, trying to cause you to lose your cool. When you get home, your spouse is acting crazy and home seems like it's hell. I mean, you, you can't figure out. Everywhere you are, even in your mind, you're troubled and stressed and anxious and, and out of the norm. There's this extra pressure and that is a blitz. That is when the pressure comes on ever more and heavier than ever before. And you can only say everything, everywhere, and everyone is against me. You feel like there's no way you can handle the pressure. This is the testimony of the text because there's a king in the text. His name is Jehoshaphat. Would you say that? Oh, y'all bad. Amen. Jehoshaphat. And now Jehoshaphat was an average king. He was an everyday king. He was a round-the-way brother. He was just trying to serve the Lord, just trying to do right by the Lord and right by the Lord's people. But as he was going about to do the work of the Lord, he got a report, and this was the report. Look, Jehoshaphat, uh, you are getting ready to be attacked. He said, oh, my, but there's no way they can attack because they got to cross the Red Sea. He said, I got bad news, and then I got worse. 
worse news. Here's the bad news. They've already crossed the Dead Sea. He said, oh my, that's bad news. But he said, even worse than all of that, not only have they crossed the, the Dead Sea, in addition to that, not only are the Moabites are attacking you, but also the Edomites are attacking you. Uh, you are being attacked from everywhere. Even the Ammonites are attacking you. He even thought the Shilites were attacking him. I mean, he had a folk attacking him from everywhere on every side. It was like everybody was coming at once. And so he said, I don't know what I'm going to do. The Bible says, Hodari, that he was terrified, that he was petrified, that he was so upset, he began to lose his cool. But all of a sudden, he decided, instead of panicking, he decided, instead of having a panic attack, attack uh, uh, he decided, instead of going crazy, he said, I'm going to fall on my face and we're going to seek the face of the Lord. He said, come on, y'all, we need to fast. And the people of God began to fast and pray. Now look, they were fasting and praying and while they were fasting and praying, something went down. In fact, they were in the, the house of worship, uh, the temple, uh, the, 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 the tent, and, and right then, the prophet came forward while they were worshiping and said, look, y'all, uh, God has given me a word for us. This is the word. The word is, this battle is not ours, it's the Lord. <coughs> Now, now, you're missing that because it doesn't make sense. When the notice is in the mail, it says foreclosure. It has your address on it. How can you say this battle is not yours? It's the Lord. It doesn't make sense. When you step outside, you look in your driveway, and the car is not there, and you've got to tell Boo, baby, uh, it wasn't stolen. Uh, I didn't park it somewhere else, but they repoled the car. How can you say this battle is not yours? It's the Lord. When the pink slip is in your pocket, and you don't know what you're going to do next, how how can you say this battle is not yours? It's the Lord. Oh, y'all not feeling me. When your time is running out and you've been waiting for a boo, you've been living right, loving right, doing right, but you want to have a baby and you don't know how you're going to have a baby, you figure I might just cast lots and get what I get. But you, you have to say this battle is not yours. It's the Lord. It's hard to accept the reality when you're in a fight, when you're facing the enemy, when you can see the enemy, when you can feel the enemy, when you can uh, smell the enemy. It's all around you, even in you. This battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Yeah, that's what he said to him. He said, this battle is not yours. It's the Lord. <coughs> and he encouraged him with the challenge that if you wait on the Lord, the Lord will fight for you. He said, you don't even have to fight this battle. And you'll notice that the king began to pray. But as he was praying, he prayed the promises found in the scripture. He prayed the testimony of the scripture. He prayed what God would have him to pray, to trust in the Lord. He prayed that God would provide for him and God would make a way and God was faithful and God had a testimony. <coughs> I'm going to borrow some water. Amen. He prayed that God would provide his need and even quench his thirst. Amen. And so here he is praying, thank you, Pastor, praying this prayer. And while he's praying, bless your heart. Amen. While he's praying this prayer, uh, God began to affirm him and assure him some more that you won't have to fight in this. You can be still. And so what did he do next? He went back to worship. And look, you got to read the text, the whole chapter, because they really had church. I, I mean, he even assigned folk to sing in the choir. Look, y'all going to be the choir. Uh, y'all going to pray and y'all can dance. I mean, they really had church before battle. And while they were having church, check it out when you get home. Verse 22 says, while they were worshiping, they began to win the battle. Because what happened is, these enemies that had gotten together to overtake them began to fight each other. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you, you missed that. The enemy, the, the, the three enemies that had gotten together to fight him began to fight each other. They began to look at each other and say, no, no, we're not going to do it this way. Uh, they began to take off their nails and put on some Vaseline and they started fighting each other. And there was a fight while they were in church. The enemy was fighting outside the church. Amen. amen. Okay, y'all not feeling me. Uh, let me see if I can make it plain. I, I want to teach this pretty simply, so let me make it plain through an acrostic. I want to call it face. Would you say face? Yeah, because it really teaches us how to get a breakthrough in the midst of a blitz. Amen. It teaches us how to get a breakthrough in the midst of a blitz. Someone didn't get it. It teaches us how to get a in the midst of a Okay, the first thing, the first thing that you see throughout the scriptures, praise God. 
throughout the scriptures is you see, when there is a blitz, an attack, there is often a response, Hodari, this is the first one, for, for faith of fasting. Would you say fasting? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about fasting. It's the idea that you consecrate yourself uh, by denying your flesh, denying your desires, and deepening your devotion. Okay, you deny your desire and deepen your devotion. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. Why don't you say it with me? You deny your desire and deepen your devotion. Oh, praise God. Now, there are various forms of fasting, but see here, they literally went into a one-day fast. They just begin to fast. They, they push back from the table. They said, Lord, uh, we need you. They begin to fast. And whenever you find yourself in a blitz, the first thing you ought to do is begin to fast. That's what it is. Uh, in faith, the F is fast. Now, I know some of y'all are not feeling me. Uh, some of you say, well, you know, that's too sacrimonious. I'm not that deep. You know, I just accepted the Lord. I just joined the church. I'm not into all that. But let me warn you. Uh, that when the blitz is hard enough, when the blitz is heavy enough, when the burden is heavy enough, when the pain is hard enough, then you will fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll fast, and you didn't even realize you were fasting. Folks, I have to say to you, have you eaten this day? I mean, did you eat this week? I, I mean, did you take a shower? I mean, because you just fasting from everything. I mean, you're under so much pressure, pressure, you know. You, you're just going to fast. But not only is it fasting, and when you fast, please, please let us say, when you fast, it's not just not doing but you replace what you normally do to do devotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do devotion. Wake your neighbor up. They, they need to get this. You do devotion. Now, devotion is earnestly seeking the face of the Lord. It's studying the scriptures. It's engaging in worship. It's engaging with the people of God. It's anything and everything that gets you closer to God. But not only do you fast, but you begin to ask. Yeah, that's F. Face, F is first. Next is A. Hold on, next is ask. You got that, Nehemiah? Ask. Now look, all you are doing is asking the Lord to show himself. Asking the Lord to be faithful. Now here, please understand, I'm not talking about uh, asking for a particular material need. There's nothing wrong with that. We talked about that before. But when I talk about seeking his face, it's something different. You're really saying, God, God, be God. <laughs> you missed that. You see how simple that is? God, do you. God, show up. God, intervene. I don't know how to fix it. I, I don't know what I need. I, I don't know how much money will fix it. I don't know how to change that situation. God, be God. God, show up. God, be my uh, spouse. Be my help. Be my meat. Be my savior. Be my comfort. God, be God. God, have mercy. Yeah, y'all know that prayer. Uh, that, that's one of the best prayers in the Bible. God, have mercy. Why don't you say that? God, God have mercy. You see, it's one of those prayers that you pray when you don't know what to pray. You don't know if you need that to keep the job or if you need another job, you need a promotion in the job, or you need to be relocated in the job. Just God have mercy. You know, you, you don't know what to pray. It's a child situation. God have mercy. I, I just need you, God. Ask. And the Bible says in James chapter 4 that we have not because we ask not. And I'm going to keep on preaching this sermon. I'm going to preach this word every time I get a chance because a lot of people somehow believe that just because they have a need that God will meet it or just because they have a desire God will meet it but God says you got to ask me baby you got to call up you you got to text me you got to IM me you got to hit me up on let me know talk to me that's what I want ask me he says ask but in the same verse James chapter 4 he says we ask with the wrong motives yeah yeah we have asked with the wrong motives we have because we ask amiss that means that we've got stuff in our heart that that's not right. So it's first, it's fast, but then it's ass, but then the C is you got to cast. You, did you get that? Cast. C-A-S-T. You, you got that, Kendra? C-A-S-T. You got to cast some stuff away. Whenever you're seeking God for a breakthrough, it's time to go through your life, go through your heart, go through your situation, and, okay, y'all not feeling me. Y'all not feeling me. I, I, I drive a 14-passenger van. Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful 14-passenger van. And one day I want to fill that up with, with children. You know, one day I just went, amen, amen, I'll just keep on preaching. It's a beautiful 14-passenger van. But look, I, 
don't drive any guests unless we made arrangements in, in advance. And the reason is because I've got six kids, and because of my schedule, just pray for me. Don't judge me. Just pray for me. Judge not. Amen. Judge not. Amen. Judge not. Amen. We, we eat popcorn in the car, and so we clean it out about once a week, but you wouldn't know it unless you caught us on the day we cleaned it out. And so if I'm going to pick somebody up, which I'm willing to do if we talk in advance, if I'm going to pick somebody up, I have my children cast everything in the van that's not supposed to be there. That old hamburger, amen. That old shoe, those clothes, that popcorn seeds. Cast it all out. Cast it all out. We, we clean it out. And then when you get in my van, you say, oh, Reverend, this is a nice van. You keep it nice because we cast it all out. We clean it out. Can I talk to you? There's some stuff in your life. Okay, there's some stuff in my life that I need to cast out. Yeah, all of us, we have some dirt. We have some dust. We have some muck. We have some mess. We have some uh, we, we, we have some offense against a brother or a sister. Mm, did you see them? Did you see what she was wearing? You know, they seem like, I know they're not real. Did you see? Did you hear? No, 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 no. That, that's that stuff we need to cast out. And I'm trying to preach this word because I know when we clean this stuff up, then God will bless us. Yeah, yeah. God is impressed with the desire of consecration. When I desire to be clean before the Lord, when I desire to be right before the Lord, the Lord desires to bless me. The Lord says, ooh, look at you. You've gotten right before me. I'm pleased with you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Let me bless you. You got to know there's a whole nother level of consecration we all can get to. I'll say it a different way. There's a whole nother level of holiness we all can get I see why y'all missing me because I said the don'ts. So let me talk about the do's. You see, God just doesn't see our don'ts, but he looks at our do's. He says, are you loving other people? Are you speaking to other people? Are you talking to the brother who doesn't talk to you? Are you going to greet the sister who doesn't greet you? Are you loving on your family? Are you loving on your children? Are you kind towards your ex? Okay, are you loving on people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you forgiving people who don't deserve to be forgiven? Are you praying for people? You know you're supposed to pray for people. I'm going to move on. Did you know you're supposed to pray for people? That's our responsibility. Uh, is there anybody in here who prays for the president? Is, is there anybody here who prays for the pastor? Yeah, yeah, there's a whole lot of people who need prayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's your responsibility to pray for them, for us, and for me. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your responsibility. God holds you accountable. I got to move on. Recently, I I've noticed since we had the baby, I guess about two weeks now, that I don't take very good care of my wife. I'm just confessing. Y'all can be mad at me if you want to. She takes great care of me, but I don't take as much care of her. Now, I noticed this because uh, now that she's resting, I I'm trying not to ask her for stuff. But, but, but I'm so used to asking her stuff. Now, honey, do you know my shoes are? Honey, do you know my undergarments are? Honey, do you know what the food is? Honey, do you know where the phone is? Honey, do you know where the remote is? Honey, 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 honey. I'm, I'm so accustomed. Well, can I talk to you? Uh, we got to work on ourselves to do more. Yeah, we got to do more for others. And it's so natural that I've become selfish. I, I've learned to appreciate and just uh, rely and let her take care of me. Amen. But God wants me to do more. I'm moving on. I know y'all didn't like that. Amen. We got to cast some stuff out. And that's not just not doing, but that's also doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says to honor your parents. Yeah, yeah. Honor your parents. The Bible says to uh, honor your husband. The Bible says to love your wife. That means listen all day. Amen. And the Bible says these things we ought to do. Amen. The Bible says to give in church. The Bible says to be a part of the church. I could keep on going. The Bible says to obey the law. That means stop speeding. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and, and so those casting those things away. I'm almost done. We said faith was what? We said it was first fasting. Would you say fasting? But then we said it was asking. Would you say asking? But then we said it was see casting. Would you say casting? But please know, I am not making this up. I know you feel like I'm making this up because this next piece, this E right here, it seems so churchy. Yeah, it seems like something I just want to say. It seems like I just tagged the song. But I didn't just tag the song. Check out the text. Uh, you got to exalt the Lord in your time of blitz, in your time of trouble, in your time of heartache. You got to decide that you will worship the Lord. You, you got to say, although I've got pain in my life, I'm worshiping the Lord. Although I feel like I'm going to lose my life, I'm worshiping the Lord. Although Although I don't see my way out, I'm worshiping the Lord. Although I don't understand it and they don't understand it, I'm worshiping the Lord. you got to decide to worship the Lord while you're in the wilderness, to worship the Lord before you see the blessing. you got to, okay, okay, I knew this would happen. I knew this would happen. I, 
I, I knew this would happen. Uh, uh, let me talk to you real quick about worship. See, most of us, um, okay, uh, are you familiar with Yellowstone? Yellowstone is a wonderful park. Uh, Wyoming, right? Well, Yellowstone, uh, uh, what, is that right? I just want to make sure with me. Yellowstone is a wonderful park. And, and in Yellowstone, they have geysers, yeah. Geysers are these underwater, these boiling uh, pockets of water that shoot up every now and then, yeah. But there's one that's most famous and most noted. This geyser is called Old Faithful, yeah, yeah. And Old Faithful goes off every 44 minutes or every hour and a half. It's been doing this for hundreds of years. Old Faithful, it, it shoots up in the air and goes off. And a lot of us, we have that kind of worship life. You, you can basically time it. On Sundays, I worship. Hallelujah! On Sundays, I thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, maybe on Tuesday, I come to Bible study and I worship a little. Maybe when I get my plate on my table, thank you, Lord, for this food we're about to receive. I mean, I'm, I'm old faithful. I'm predictable. I'm stable. I'm sustained. And I'm consistent. Now, there's nothing wrong with old faithful worship, but I just want to challenge you that maybe our worship every now and then shouldn't be like a geyser, but it should be like a volcano, yes, a volcano, yeah. If you ever watch volcanoes, there, there's volcanoes, particularly in Hawaii, I mean, I'm going to see one one day, and, and these volcanoes, they're not scheduled, they're not timed, but when the pressure builds up, when the pressure underground, when, when, when the, 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 the tables underground begin to push together, when the load is heavier, when the tension is hotter, when it all comes together, something happens on the inside that's explosive, it's not scheduled scheduled, it's not timed, it's not predictable, it's not controlled, it's just explosive. And every now and then, I believe we ought to have that kind of worship. I believe we ought to be so excited about God, so moved by God, so dependent on God, so desperate for God, so need of God. I need God that I'm going to worship him. And I don't care if it looks like orthodoxy. I don't care if it looks like it fits in place. I don't care if it's sanctioned by somebody. I don't care what you care. I've come to worship God because I need God. I need his help. I need his mercy. I need his hope. I need his healing. I need a touch from heaven. God, I'm worshiping you with all my might. Because I got trouble on me. I, I got uh, things chasing me. I, I got haters on me. I got enemies and frenemies. I'm worshiping you, God. Because I need you, God. I need you right now to move on my behalf. To help me out. To show yourself mighty. To show yourself strong. I need God. Because I need God. I worship God with all my might. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. You and you only, Lord. You are my rock and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? You're the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah! 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 Yes, Lord. My soul says, yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer, my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. Yes, Lord. Whatever you want, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord. yes. Say yes, Lord, yes, to your will, to your way. I'll say yes, Lord. I hold heart, I'll obey. 
When your spirit, when your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my end. 